blood vessels of the head and neck region and inside the cranial cavity we have our crystal skull and then we have our non-crystal skull I'm not sure what it's called and we have the half head model for some of the external vessels right. so let's start at the beginning the beginning is here okay the common carotid so you're going to have a left and a right common carotid. The beginning is also here. You can see closely inside the bone of the cervical, you can see the vertebral. And again, there's going to be a left vertebral, and ultimately there's going to be a right vertebral. Okay, so they're bringing blood to the face, to the muscles of the face, the skin of the face, and to the brain. So here's our common carotid. Okay. It's going to bifurcate. It's going to split at a certain point, right about here. Okay. Let's follow the external first. So the external comes up, and then it begins to create branches that stay outside the bone and are going to perfuse the structures outside the bone. And they're easily named. Let's follow them. So we see one here going back to the occipital area, occipital artery. We have one coming up to the temporal area, the temporal artery. Now let's just bring this forward if we can for a moment and just kind of hang it over the side. So here we have this one. That's the first branch. It's running underneath the bone here, then it comes up and wraps around the mandible to the outside. There's your mandibular branch. This one here is most likely your lingual branch. Okay. This one here is most likely your superior thyroid branch. So you see there's lots of little branches coming off of the external carotid, perfusing different areas. Pop that back in. But the easiest ones to see, mandibular, bless you, temporal, occipital, and then, you know, we can argue over which is which, but you're going to have a lingual. This could be, this could be maxillary, but lingual this is most likely superior thyroid. The other branch the internal carotid stays deep and goes up, I'm just gonna put the stick in there, goes up into the carotid canal, right? That foramen in the base of the skull, the carotid canal, but it goes up and then it angles, so I can't get the stick all the way through. So the internal carotid goes up through the carotid canal and makes its way here to the circle of Willis, or what they call now the cerebral arterial circle. The internal carotid supplies blood to that circle. And then ultimately that circle supplies blood to the parts of the brain. Now, this circle is also supplied by the vertebral. The vertebral artery comes up through the foramen magnum and you can see the two V-shaped vessels there. Those are the vertebrals coming up and they combine into one vessel down the center there that's the basilar. And the basilar then supplies this circle. So the circle is supplied by the two vertebrals of basilar and the two internal carotids. Now, coming off of the circle, you're going to have two branches that supply the anterior aspect of the cerebrum. Right? Those are the anterior cerebrals. You have two branches that supply the middle aspect of the cerebrum, the two middle cerebrals, and you have two branches that supply the posterior aspect of the cerebrum, the posterior cerebrals. Right, 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 left, left, left. They talk about some of these smaller components that kind of create the circle, the anterior communicating components, vessels, branches, and the posterior communicating branches or vessels. Now, these are supplying the cerebrum. There's also vessels that supply the cerebellum. We can see 
a little bit of those here. So I'll get it with the stick here, okay? That is your anterior or superior cerebellum. I think our slide has it as superior cerebellum. Right. You have this branch here, that's your inferior cerebellum. All right. These are taking care of the cerebellum. All right. And there's multiple ones that take care of that. These little four guys here in the center, those are your pontine. They supply the pons. All right. There's four little guys right here. You have a little branch going down the center here between the vertebrals. There's a little skinny branch going down. That supplies the spinal cord. That's the anterior spinal. You have it down there at the bottom of your picture, right? So this is what's happening inside. This is perfusing the brain. We see what's happening outside. Um, we look at it here. We can compare the two. This has a a little bit nicer, maybe, representation of the occipital, the temporal. Here's probably your maxillary. Here's your facial. Here's most likely the external carotid that gives rise to all of these branches. Here you see probably a branch coming off of the middle cerebral a branch coming off of the posterior cerebral. You could also look at this, all right? This is not as nicely done as the crystal skull, right? 5,000 versus only 2,000. Let me get what you pay for, right? But here's the circle. We had to paint on a little bit of the circle, right? Half price, you only get half the vessels, right? So here's the, the cerebral arterial circle, a circle of Willis, you can see your two anteriors painted on. You can see your anterior communicating components painted on. Uh, here's a piece of your posterior cerebral, and then the other one will be coming off here. Then you have just two little nubs here. Those would be the middle cerebrals. They'd be coming up onto the brain. Okay, you realize that the middle cerebral above the circle is the same vessel as the internal carotid below the circle, the same vessel. Here you can see your basilar. Here you can see your two vertebrals. Okay. Here you can see some of your cerebellar, might be your inferior or posterior cerebellar. Okay. Here you can see some of your cerebellas. There's two more cerebellas here. One of them is your superior, maybe one is your anterior. No pone time on that, and nothing on the outside. Nothing up my sleeve, nothing on the outside.